Yeah. Yeah, look at this. It's crazy, man. I'll be hiking off someplace, then it's all of nowhere. I'll just start crying. <laughs> like, oh my god, this is so beautiful. That's good. You're in it. Day 73, uh, we went two and a half miles to the food drop. Today's the food drop. Um, we're about an hour early. But I'd rather be early than late. We also are gonna have, uh, hopefully the food drop people take away our trash, which is sizable. This is just mine. And we also ran into uh, Big Boy and um, Grizzly Bear, who you'll recognize from they're still coming from uh, past videos. We haven't seen them in about, it's gotta be three weeks plus. And um, we're gonna try and secure them a ride to town with our food drop people. Here they come. So there they are. Hi. Grizzly bear and big boy. <laughs> haven't seen them in a while. Village Tar, you know her. So quick update, um, the food drop got to us probably, oh, he's probably 20, 25 minutes early. We were all hanging out. Super good guy, he took all of our trash, which was a lot. And I was able to get um, a ride for a big boy and um, a grizzly bear. So they're headed off to some town somewhere, kind of far out of the guy's way, but good guy. So uh, he's, he's taking them. We did have a fourth person uh, added to our food drop to make it a little cheaper. And uh, it's a gal named Sweet. She's Canadian and we've biked with her before and we were at the same shelter. She was a little bit behind us because she left Parisburg after we did. She had to go to the outfitter and somewhere else and the post, maybe the post office. So she got a late start. So she's always been a little bit behind us. So I sent a young man, Village Tart on and uh, I'm gonna have to wait here so she gets her food. We, nobody has signal, so we can't text her and hide the food. Um, and you can't obviously leave it in plain sight, so I gotta wait. So I'm hanging out here. We may have storms coming in, so today could get real funky. Finally making it here. You're in pretty good shape. You're in pretty good time. All right, so I'm on the move. Sweet got there, as you saw, and got her food, so I feel good about that. It was uh, not quite an hour, so it was no big deal at all. So we popped out on this road. It's supposed to be a little water source. But there's a old house. There's a car over there. There's a couple of old cars here. I don't know. Looks like a scene in a movie I don't want to be in. There is this river going up here. And uh, looks like pretty good. I need a little water. Problem is up the hill is a cow pasture. And the water is going this direction from the cow pasture, so it's no good. But there were some jugs of water. And uh, looked okay, so I got a little water from there. Although, it could be from that house. <laughs> Maybe that's how they get their victims, I don't know. But I took some water anyway. This could be the last video. Coming up pretty soon, something called the Kefir Oak. And it's the largest, supposed to be, I get the largest or the oldest tree, maybe both, in the whole southern part of the Appalachian Trail. I think it's supposed to be 300 years old. Okay, I don't know if you can see it. We'll have to go to the other side and take a tall picture. But this behemoth is the Kefir Oak, the largest tree in the south, on the south Appalachian Trail. Here. 300 years old. Let's 
see how, let me drop back here a little bit. See if we can get a good picture. Okay. Pretty cool. Give me a little sense of scale for my trekking poles. I guess it there. There you go. Stopped and had lunch. Just a big rock. This when I got to the top of the mountain. Kind of cruise along the top of it now. Caught the kids. They were having lunch. And uh, so we're all caught up. A young man just to, in front of me. He finished lunch early and took off. The village starts behind me. I'll catch a young man in a few minutes. I'm trying to go about eight more miles. There's a shelter. Well, there was a shelter before that, but we're not stopping there. It's way off. And we had flagged it as a possible spot of its storm, but I think storm's going to scoot by us and we're not going to get hit. That's pretty good. You know, last night that storm didn't hit us either, but we talked to some people who were about two miles away from us, if that, and it hit them pretty hard. So we're just getting real lucky with the weather. It's first shelter, it's off the trail, but we find it as a possible spot to jump off if the weather got bad. But I think we're fine. And we're gonna head to the next one and then kind of make decisions from there. If we're staying there, or jumping forward. I had to climb a little bit more and I'm really on top of this mountain now. There's an attraction here, it's called the Bruiser's Knob Carns, which are just these stacks of rocks in here. It looked a little more impressive from the... Oh, here's a better one, hold on. So they made it out to be like it was all this real mystical thing, but... Just some people just stack some rocks. Still pretty cool though. Here's a few more little ones. So who knows why? Here's some more. So here's a sarver hollow shelter. There's four tenths of a mile down this hill. That was the place I said that we could go if uh, the storm was bad. But I think it's going to miss us. We're going to the Nidae shelter. Six miles away looks like. And make some decisions from there. Here's stuff that slows you down. Let me turn the camera off. A little climb. It's gonna be a good view. Here we go. Oh. Here's the view. Again. Here's the trail. I'm just gonna slow me down. I've been going on this for a while. I almost fell once. I'm fine, but I tore my leg up on some thorn or something. It just goes on down. never ends ah so much better it took forever to go through those rocks here's something I knew was coming up today I'm excited about I am passing over the Eastern Continental Divide uh, it's back
back to regular normal human hiking. It's about 520. I'm a little over a half mile away from the nitty shelter. That might be the end of my day. I did want to show you this, this path I'm going down. It says pine needles. Pine needles are the greatest hiking period. There's nothing better than hiking on pine needles. It's like hiking on a cloud. It kind of smells like pine. There's a shelter. It looks like there's a few people. Let's see what's going on. Hey! What's up? Alright, well, <clears throat> we only went 12.63 miles today. Uh, but it was tough. That's, it took all day. Which is fine. But uh, we're 42 and a half miles from Daleville, which is the next place we're going in. And uh, um, basically, we have to have two 17 mile days in a row. And then uh, whatever that would be, seven miles in, because I want to come in on Sunday at lunchtime. Same kind of deal. So I'm having town food for lunch and dinner. Um, I don't know. It depends on the terrain. It doesn't look good. So all I can do is try.